Hello guys, this is Kashmar from Geek Factor doing one of uh, my rare interviews in English. I'm uh, sitting here with Michal Elvenstein. Is it Elven... Stach, that's really close enough. Elvenstach, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. We were just practicing a minute ago. And your nickname is Elven. That's true. We're, yeah, which is a very great, very cool sounding nickname. <laughs> and you said your kids call you Elven, right? Well, it's, it's, it's been my nickname since I was like 12. So basically, oh. everyone calls me that way. Yeah. That's fine. You know, I have my my nickname is Kachmar because my my full name is Kachmarek. So it's just short and it's Kachmar. Uh-huh. But my my kids my kids know it. I don't know if they call me. I, I should I should make them call me call, call me make my them nickname. Call you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> names. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a nickname, it's cool, it's adorable. Uh, you are here representing Czech Games Edition. That's correct. Which is one of my all-time favorite uh, publishers. Uh, really, I love all your games. I'm looking forward to each and every single one of your games. Code Names is like one of those games that uh, we once played it for like four hours. <laughs> and we only stopped because there was a couple who started fighting in the middle. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and so so we love this game we always bring it to the table especially when we're trying to introduce new players to the hobby mm-hmm. and it's great for that I think it's a great gateway game it's a, sure. it is a great gateway game um, can you tell us uh, what, how did you come here and why did you come here and what do you think about Poland as uh, in, in the sense of you know Polish gamers uh, as a market for your games mm-hmm. uh, and I know you work with Rebel uh, Pell as the publisher how does that work for you mm-hmm. guys would you tell us about Poland basically oh we have very good friends here so we love to come here as often as possible sometimes it's not so we've been missing Pionek for a few years now so finally we felt like it's time for us to revisit this beautiful event and this is the 10th anniversary I heard of Pionek yes yes so exactly. we thought this is a good time for us to come and yeah so we wanted to introduce some of the new games that we are bringing this year to our fans and for the gamers and and also to test them because we are now in the seasons when we still have few months to really play test them really well that we know that things are balanced that they're working well that we know that our rules are understandable so that's why we're here okay and uh, do you know are you aware of uh, the of the fact that uh, Czech Games Edition has a big fan following in Poland there's a lot of fans of your games here are you aware of that well uh, we know we have fans and we're really like, we are glad and everywhere we go we can find people that like our games which really makes us happy okay well, well great great euro euro games we love them and uh, i just uh, i was wondering because we have a few games uh, here uh, to tell you to, to talk about uh, in particular uh, because i heard that you guys stick to a strategy of like not doing like 10 games in a year or five, even five games in a year, you try to be a bit more picky when it comes to choosing games and just doing like one or two games a That's year true. and to polish them. Is that... That's how we like to do things. The same goes even with our digital applications because we really feel like we actually want to present quality products. So I don't think we would be currently able to release 10 games in a year and to really test them well, to really play them enough to know we're bringing a quality game to the market. So we'd rather publish three games that we feel are great than some that we feel like mediocre. Oh, well, that's that's a very good policy. And you, you, you've, you've become to be known like this, this publisher of heavy Euro games like Civilization, like uh, Galaxy Trucker, Alchemist, Bunny uh, Bunny Moose Moose, code names. That's true. Yeah. So I, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That, that, that's my point. Is just is there there you are, you guys are famous for it. Even Adrenaline, which mm-hmm. I think in its at its heart is a very brainy Euro game, and now somebody is jealous that we are doing an interview and it's interrupting us again. <laughs> They did, they, he did it. He did the same thing yesterday when I was interviewing Michal Oraj. It's on purpose. Yeah, the only time he wasn't doing doing it was when I was interviewing him. <laughs> so Ignacy Trevicek, ladies and gentlemen, is jealous. <laughs> we just give him a second to. But but for some reason, I've heard a lot of people talk about uh, Czech Games Edition as a publisher of, yeah, famous for code names and stuff like that. But a publisher of heavy Euro games. That's and true. is is that like a philosophy or is it just like a coincidence that you guys simply know well those that's actually the, a very good prototype that we received and it just happens to be a heavy euro 
Well, I think most of our games are tested internally, and it's just who we happen to be. We are Euro gamers. Okay. I think most of us are in the company, so we enjoy playing this kind of games. So we tend to uh, focus on these kind of games. So for us, if it's a smart game with lots of strategies and it's something that you can really think hard to try to find the best strategies, we like this kind of game. So every Tuesday when we go to our board game clubs, I think this is the preferable game that we pick for the night. You know, I was I love Alchemist for one reason because it made me feel so smart because I'm not really that smart, but it made me feel so smart when like mid game I finally r realized how <laughs> yeah, I finally realized how those things work with the alchemists and the and the plus and the minus and I finally got it. I was like, "Oh, I get it." And the people around the table were still having trouble with it and I was walking around explaining so this to them. And I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> I'm the smart one in this group for once. <laughs> so yeah, I love I love I love this game, I got to say. Oh, that's good. Let's walk over to those games. Let's start with this one because oh no, you know, let's start with this one because this is uh, a two version player, a two player version of a famous game called Codenames Duet that I actually played with my wife yesterday. Mm -hmm. We love codenames and I have to say if you were if you were to tell me we have codenames for two people, I would say is that gonna work? Mm -hmm. How is it gonna work? It works. It works very well for two players. So I think that's the reaction of most people. It's like people take it and it's like, do we really need more code names? And then they play it it's like we do. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this this is fantastic because sometimes you can gather, you know, like four, six, eight people to play code names. But this is great word association game just for a couple. Yes. It's it's a mainly produced for two people. You can play it with more. During our playtesting, we found out that it's really fun to have more people. It's, it works fine. But it's 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 made uh, with just two players in mind. Okay. Uh, would you like me to explain a little bit yes, about the yes, game? Yes, 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 yes. Of course, please. And also about uh, this aspect. That you you will understand what that is in a second. Okay. <laughs> so this game, I think. One value that it has, it will bring new 200 words, the card words, that means 400 words, that you can oh. are compatible with the code names, so you can now oh, yeah, mix and match them, which I think is great on its own. And the way you play it is that you are both clue giver and the guesser. You have a task together to find 15 of your agents. You see some of them on your side of, of, the, of the card, and your partner see the rest of them. Mm -hmm. And so... You're taking turns if you want. You can even choose to play twice in a row to say, okay, I'm giving a clue. My partner is guessing. And when we find them, there's a tokens that are, symbolism, uh, that are, uh, that are representing time running out. So we mm -hmm. need to reach these 15 people and not to hit assassins, which in this version, there are three of them. So it's you need to be more yeah. careful not, not to hit them, which I don't know if, if you experience that. But no, no, we haven't hit them, but <laughs> it's yeah, it's, it's tough. <laughs> you need to more, be more aware of them in, the, in this version of the game. And if you manage before the time runs out to find all 15, you won the game. If you want to make this game a little bit more challenging and spicier for you, uh, there will be this map. This is just a prototype. Every, everything we have here are just prototypes. So uh, where you can travel the world and in each location uh, you start here 99 in Prague and I'm sorry there's no Warsaw there. there's no Warsaw I don't yeah. know we need to maybe it's a prototype a, it's, a, it's a work we, in progress we can, we can talk about the Polish version <laughs> <laughs> tweaking things a little bit well so you travel from Prague and as you progressively move to places and you follow these lines the setup will get progressively more and more difficult because in some places you need to choose totally different strategies uh, in some setups it's, it's fine for you to make just sm small clues, like uh, you would say uh, just Animal 2. You are playing safe, because if you make mistakes, it really hurts you. But if you're playing safe and you manage everything, you're fine. In other places, you can be more bold. You can make like uh, four or five. You're trying to aim for that number, because you have a lower number of rounds, but it's not as punishing if you just find innocent bystanders. So there are different setups and you will realize as you play this game that you need to really choose different strategies how you're giving your clues. So I think okay. it's kind of like a refreshing way. Also, uh, it's good for a couple if you play it, you can just choose to play a few scenarios, save it for a night, and then you get more, uh, you basically can continue the next night and then see your score at the end of the mission. This is like a big mission. And you can continue to try to beat your score. So it's 
something that I think is very enjoyable, just to have this something to spice it up. Yes. That it's not the same game every time you play it. That there's something a little bit different about it. And just according to the reaction of people here, it works. And uh, because you said that you, if it's uh, if you make a mistake and you're playing it safe, you're playing it safe because if you make a mistake, it hurts you. That doesn't mean that it hurt because it's a campaign. Does it hurt you for your future games on no. that campaign? You basically just you may have a mission that you failed. You may repeat it, and so depending on how you play it, you can even take some score from the mission. So okay. uh, the way it hurts you is that you're losing more rounds. Basically, in some of these. Uh, oh, campaign okay. modes, mm -hmm. you have certain amounts of rounds that when you need to, uh, that you have to contact all your agents. And if you make mistakes, you're losing not just one round time marker, but you're losing two of them. So that's kind of like. Oh, okay. So it's tense. It's it, it very could tense. be. Usually okay. it comes to the last card and it's like, okay, we need to go for it. You need to create some clue, three or more, you know, like we, we need to make it now. And so, oh, wow. so that's cool. And there's a high five moment, moments in it, which I like. Okay, so when can we expect it to be released? Well, soon. We really hope that uh, you will get it. Uh, the least date is the Essen 2017. Okay, Essen 2017. And, uh, it depends on the languages, though, in, in which wave it will go. Okay, so I guess we'll be staying in touch with Rebel when it comes to the Polish version of it. Correct. All right, this next one is from... Uh, uh, this is this young designer, you might have heard of him, uh, Vlada... I, I don't want to mispronounce his name. Vlada Kvatil. Yes, I keep mispronouncing your guy. I thought I'm so that at least sorry. in Poland you will be able to do that. I know that other other, other nations are struggling. But because it's, it's, it's Vlada Kvatil. Vladia. Vladia. Vladia Kvatil. Vladia Kvatil. Very good. Okay. I'm learning. <laughs> so you see, this is another of these heavy euros that you described. <laughs> Just no, wait, wait, wait a second for the third game. Okay. <laughs> it's true. I think we are really aiming for the fun of it. We, we, we try to have games for gamers that like heavy Euro games, and we like to have uh, games that bring people together, and uh, it's a gateway game. And this is one of them. This is a party game where it's focused on people to get to know each other better, where okay. you are asking, you're trying to ask tough questions. Um, I wish I would have the rest of this box, so I can show, show you some components, but I will at least try to describe the basic things. Okay. You have these cards that you are basically putting together and you're asking person, some person around the table a question like, what would you miss the most if it ceased to exist, if we don't have it in this world anymore? And you need to make tough choices like chocolate or board games. <laughs> or, <laughs> or you are asking the person, what do you consider consider generally the worst thing is it worse to I don't know um, to cheat in a board game or um, to steal a shampoo in a hotel <laughs> <laughs> so things like that and and then you go around the table oh, one person needs to honestly kind of like you're using tokens to answer that question other people are guessing if they are right or, or not and then yeah, the person can comment fun. why he thinks chocolate is more important than board games and stuff like that. So it's fairly simple, super easy to learn. It supports a high uh, number of players. You can play with six players, it's fine. And it will feature beautiful squirrels. Okay, so I, because I was just, just looking at the squirrel and I was like thinking, so this is these are going to be like light questions. It's not going to be, when you said, when you started to say like cheats and I was like wondering, so is it going to be like, what do you prefer? What is worse, to cheat on your wife or to steal from an old lady. It's not Actually, that. It's not going to be that dark. It's going to be more we, light. We experimented even with really like serious questions, but it okay. could happen. Sometimes it takes fun of, out of the game, you know. And we decided we we prefer light-hearted game in this case. So it's more focused on the fun in this. Yeah, you know, my, I always thought that you know it's best to keep things like you know like religion, politics, and all that stuff away from board games because it might create a discussion between players that might not end very well mm -hmm. and because you know those are topics that tend to divide uh, people and with bo board games I'm, are supposed to be about bringing people together so I think I that's know. a... I think it, it could work well. Uh, I think honestly that uh, it can stir up some good conversation but we just decided for this kind of game it will be better just to go to a light-hearted way and there are some tough ones like for example would you prefer to uh, find a cure for possible zombie apocalypse <laughs> or something else, you know, so we are dealing with serious questions too. Oh yeah, yeah, you're definitely right. Well, I'm looking forward to it, SN.
Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And when it comes to the you know the dark, uh, more serious uh, themes, uh, you know, there's like with code names, you know, there you can always have other versions, you know, like adult. That's a question and stuff like that. So good luck. Uh, good luck. It sounds very fun. Good luck with that. Now I want to. I kept this box out of the frame. This is the one I'm most interested in because it's a big box and it's sci-fi, and I love big box sci-fi games. Mm -hmm. So I bring to you Pulsar. 2849, Mining Beyond the Horizon. 2849, do you know what happened in 1849? I, I should have, right? Should oh. I? <laughs> <laughs> it, was the, it was the year of gold rush, when they found the gold. Oh, okay. So this game, a thousand years later, we found a way how to mine pulsars, and suddenly this huge space exploration and expansion oh. is happening. So we are flying all around the space, finding pulsars, uh, starting new mining colonies. So this is a heavy Euro game, okay? That's one thing to know. This is just really about finding the good strategy, how to start your engine well to harvest the most at the end victory points and to uh, capture the most planets. There's no combat in this game, so it's not like a forex game, just because sometimes people see space and they yes, automatically... Yes, I know. Yeah. So this is not that kind of game. This is a Euro game uh, from Vladimir Suhi, who is famous author of like Shipyard and you know Last Will and games like that. So this is a very smart game, and I think it was actually one of the biggest hits here because I I had book times at my table all the time throughout this event. Oh. And so I'm really pleased. We're still in a testing phase, so there will be still more tweaks to come. But even now, I had really good feedback on it. Uh, this is a more challenging game to explain, but there's a very smart mechanism how you're using dice. It's a dice tweaking and using game where you roll die and uh, then you're basically drafting the dice. So this is a, it's a dice drafting game where you are exploring the space, building factories, mining, etc. Uh, there are going to be, because I'm going to, I think I've already filmed some, but if not, I'm going to film some extra ones just to make sure. Uh, shots of people playing it. It has a very cool looking round board. Yeah. And uh, it, I mean, uh, but, uh, but I'm guessing the uh, graphics and it's the artwork is still pr in prototype version, right? Okay. It's and be Essen nice. again? Yes. We are aiming for Essen 2017. Wow, well, you have a lot of cool things coming out this year then. So, uh, that's, I mean, that's three games, so for Czech Games Edition, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of cool that's things. That's true, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to all of them, so I, ho I hope me and my wife start this year. We promise ourselves we're going to make it a lot more, you know, uh, convention heavy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we are hoping to go to SN. I hope I, I get to see you there if we do. Hopefully. Uh, we will keep tabs on Rebel, uh, the Polish publisher uh, that uh, works with uh, Czech Games Edition about all three of those games <laughs> and what we might see them in Poland. And well, good luck. It was it was extremely nice to meet you. Thank you for talking to us. I know you're running. You're gonna. You have to run soon. We have to run <laughs> soon. Have a lo long way to go. And uh, well, just good luck and thank you. It was you. my pleasure. Thank, thank you. you so much.